2016-2017 Common Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. Your smile is your logo, your personality is your business card. How you leave others feeling after an experience with you becomes your trademark. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll for the meeting today? There are 12 present. Alder person Jim Boren, Todd Wolf, Tammy Robbie, and Rosemary Trester are excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is the uh, approval of the minutes from our last city council meeting. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. There are no resignations or mayor's appointments this evening. Next, we'll move on to a presentation. Uh, tonight, we have a presentation. Um, <coughs> by Russ Green, the NOAA representative for the Marine Sanctuaries Division, to give us an update on the Wisconsin Marine Sanctuary nomination and possible designation. Russ, the floor is yours. Okay, thanks. Can I just bust this? Yep. That, that was fast. You guys are really efficient. Man, there I was. Uh, well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate the, the invite and uh, an opportunity to update you on the Marine Sanctuary. Uh, for those of you that, that don't know, the National Marine Sanctuary proposal that um, has now been published, the proposal documents to create a National Marine Sanctuary in Wisconsin. Uh, I'll get to that part, but I wanted to start with sort of just a big picture. It would become one of what is now 13 National Marine Sanctuaries uh, really across the globe, and they protect a wide variety of natural and cultural resources from humpback whales to coral reefs. Up here in the Great Lakes, it would be uh, about historic shipwrecks. Uh, and we do this through a couple of really interesting ways and you know, they're very diverse places, but uh, through research, uh, resource protection, education outreach, and community engagement, that's what they have in common to really create uh, better public accessibility and better value for some of these really special places. Uh, next slide, please. All right, let's see if I can, oh, I know what the next one is. And I'll start talking about it before we get there. Oh, there we go. So uh, curiously, the first National Marine Sanctuary was created in the mid-1970s. This kicked off the National Marine Sanctuary Program, which sits under the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Uh, it's a program within that. Is the USS Monitor, sank in 1862 off the coast of North Carolina in about 240 feet of water. So a long history of protecting cultural resources and also connecting them with the public. If you get a chance and you're in Newport News, Virginia, uh, hit the Mariner's Museum and you'll see the Monitor, this uh, really iconic uh, ship that changed naval warfare and is an iconic piece of American history. You'll see that really well interpreted there. Next slide, please. Uh, the last sanctuary to be designated was the Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary up in Alpena, Michigan, over there in Lake Huron. That was in 2000. That's the last time a sanctuary was designated. What's changed a great deal over time, it used to be very top down to create a National Marine Sanctuary. Uh, and two years ago, NOAA created a community driven process where a community would get together, as many of you are familiar with this already, and many have worked on the proposal, uh, the nomination in Wisconsin. So it starts at the grassroots level um, and sort of moves on from there. We're on the second step of that process now. We're in designation. This is one of only two sites that have moved on to designation. Uh, there's another site in Maryland that's also in designation. Thunder Bay is 4,300 square miles and it protects about 100 uh, historic shipwrecks. And I'll talk, I have a few examples to connect the two places as we move on. Next slide, please. Here in Wisconsin, here's the proposal um, as, as we have it. So this would be exclusively maritime heritage based, really historic shipwrecks, protecting those, um, those ships that connect us to the past through history and archaeology. These were the ships that transformed America through. Well, you know, from the 1600s on, Native Americans have been using this area for millennia, but really in the 19th and the 20th century, the, the innovation uh, and the people and the goods that are moving around the Great Lakes on this giant water highway, 1,200 miles long, 
Uh, that story, a very American story, is captured in these shipwrecks in the Great Lakes. Uh, and so we aim to interpret and protect uh, this version or this part of that story here in Wisconsin. Uh, and you can see, you know, the history is, is strong. Uh, the archaeology, archaeological potential is, is phenomenal. The recreational potential is phenomenal, as well as the heritage tourism. Uh, so if you read through the proposal documents, and I've got a, a link at the end to, to guide you to them, um, we're proposing, and this is really based on the nomination that was submitted by the governor and the state of, uh, of Wisconsin and the communities, 39 shipwrecks, 37 shipwrecks in the dark blue area, three counties, it's about 1,200 square miles, 1,100 square miles. Uh, that's NOAA's preferred alternative, and we stuck with what the, the state recommended. Uh, but we also included in the proposal, uh, we analyzed Kiwani County, a fourth county. So you'll see two proposals in there. They're boundary alternative A and boundary alternative B. That's really the, the big difference between the two. In the dark blue area, there's 37, uh, again, historic shipwrecks, maybe 80 yet to be discovered uh, in this area. Uh, and the proposal is about the history and the archaeology, but if you read through the nomination uh, and then make your way to the actual designation proposal, you'll find that there's a strong education and heritage tourism component. And what's so challenging and uh, exciting about the Wisconsin proposal is linking these five communities together from Mequon all the way up to two rivers and really creating one continuous network of of a marine sanctuary in Alpine, it's just, it's just one town. Uh, here we have an opportunity to really connect towns that already have um, a rich maritime history, are already keyed into the heritage tourism, and the sanctuary aims to sort of uh, work on that, again, with the state and all the work that's been done for 30 years by the Wisconsin Historical Society to elevate and create uh, more value around these places. The second piece you'll see in that uh, proposal uh, are the regulations, and that those are published in there too, the proposed regulations. One of the, the, the chief difference in the regulations from, say, a place like Thunder Bay, here we've uh, chosen to um, propose to prohibit anchoring on all historic shipwrecks. In Thunder Bay National Marine Sanctuary, you can only anchor on the shipwrecks. Um, well, you're prohibited from anchoring shipwrecks that have a permanent mooring buoy on them. If they don't have a mooring buoy, you can grapple and you can uh, tie your boat to them by grappling through with your anchor. Here, our preferred alternative is to prohibit anchoring anywhere in the sanctuary, uh, but I would quickly add that the management plan that goes along with this proposal uh, seeks to install mooring buoys in all the shipwrecks. Again, this, it's about compatible use and protecting these places, but um, we also want to um, make sure our regulations are in line with what we're gonna do on the ground. So by putting mooring buoys on there, it makes it easier for folks to uh, get to the shipwrecks and also uh, it protects them as well. So those things are really in tandem. And those are the, the main differences uh, in the proposal. So that's, that's what been, has been proposed. Next slide, please. Uh, and you get a chance here to see some of the, the fantastic preservation uh, that occurs out there in the cold freshwater of Lake Michigan. Next slide, please. A couple other shots, and you can get the sense of where, particularly in these deeper sites, anchoring can really be, um, can, can be, can be destructive to some of these sites. Um, shallow water sites, up, you think off of uh, Point Beach, where there is really tremendous public access. Often people say, well, you know, I'm not a diver, you know, what's in it for me? Uh, tremendous opportunity to connect people, again, to, to Wisconsin and our uh, national maritime heritage to the very shallow sites that are off of, uh, off Point Beach with, with kayaking and snorkeling. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, and a couple of really up-to-date examples. So already we're starting to work in support of this designation to do things in Wisconsin that, that support this mutual interest that all the communities have protecting these places. Research is at the core of what we do. This is an example of a, pro of, of a project we brought together all the partners you can see up in the top corner to actually do some work in May. So we'll do some lake bed mapping up in uh, the Manitowoc area, and it's dual purpose. It's about really high resolution data to, to help uh, fishery management, to help habitat uh, characterization, but also double dip and of course look for maritime heritage resources. I'll add real quickly, and I know I'm gonna run out of time, um, that the variety of partners here bring the resources together to make this happen. This isn't where uh, there's one funding item and we just bring people in. This is really a, a stone soup to, to make this happen. And this is the way it would uh, it kind of roll out going forward with bringing, this happens to be research, but if education and heritage tourism development would all be the same, where we've got a wide variety of partners, including private industry, that icon uh, for Kongsberg, that's a world known uh, global manufacturer of sonars. And they're willing to donate a sonar to this effort uh, to make it happen, to make sure we get the best uh, data possible. Next slide, please. Uh, that trickles down to things that are more accessible to the public or more obvious. 
This site is a screenshot up top. It's a, a dynamic map where you can visit the, the shipwrecks in Thunder Bay. We've submitted a grant here in Wisconsin to do a similar one uh, with coastal Wisconsin with the shipwrecks in the sanctuary, but also connecting the places ashore. So the Maritime Heritage, the Maritime Museum up in Manitowoc, Spaceport, all the land-based uh, features of the maritime landscape. So it's not just uh, what's in the water, it's connecting those two. So that grant proposal is in. We hope to create a dynamic site to do uh, just what you see up top. In Alpena, they, they really branded, they became part of the marine sanctuary effort and branded that to, to create um, that awareness about heritage tourism. Uh, later in the early summer, we'll bring the Department of Tourism to, to help us with a branding exercise again to link these communities together. Next slide, please. So just an example of things happening on the ground already. Education is a, is a big part of this and it's you know, really its own separate uh, talk, but I did want to mention that this also is on the ground. These programs you see to the left are, they're out there uh, in NOAA, and those, these are the kinds of uh, partners and grants that we can bring to the, bring to the table, uh, which include K through 12, they include higher education, they also include teachers heading out into, uh, into the oceans and studying with people like Robert Ballard, who you see in the bottom, the bottom bit there. Up in Manitowoc, they're already working with some NOAA grant money. Uh, and we've already had discussions with the Dennis Sullivan to figure out how we can move that boat up and down the sanctuary and connect it to all of these communities and do programming. You saw uh, some kids on a boat in the earlier slide. In Alpena, we were able to, with a park service grant, get every fourth grader in Alpena out on a glass bottom boat to connect with the lake. We envision doing something similar with the Dennis Sullivan, but through five communities rather than just one. Next slide, please. Uh, and then finally, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, well, what about the visitor center? Alpena has a visitor center, and that's sort of the iconic thing that people latch on to. Um, in our management plan, the draft management plan, you can read this for yourself, but this is about creating a plan that connects all of the communities together and the assets and the resources to this. It would be very deliberate. If we were going to do a, a visitor center, where would we do it? But maybe we don't need one. Um, and you can see, you know, all these places up top. There are already elements in each, each um, sanctuary community that if we use them correctly and sort of bind them together it's in a complementary way, we can create a really uh, cohesive experiment, uh, experience uh, for people that want to come to the marine sanctuary and visit these communities. Next slide, please. Uh, I mentioned community um, impact, community engagement. One of the key ways that this occurs in the marine sanctuary program is through advisory councils. Uh, also in our draft management plan, um, is, is an element to, to create a Sanctuary Advisory Council here in Wisconsin, which is a group of about 30 uh, folks from around the community, from citizens at large to recreational fishing, commercial fishing, small businesses uh, that really guide the sanctuary's management so it has that connection to the community. And last slide, please. And this is it. This is the website where you can access the documents. Where we are in the process right now, these are published, they're online, and they'll be there till March 31st. Um, and when that period closes, you know, we'll look at all the comments that we have um, and maybe by fall 2017 have a final proposal and if NOAA decides to go forward and, and the comments suggest that this is a good idea, that's when we would think about, NOAA would think about uh, moving the proposal from a, a de proposal of a designation to, a, to an actual designation. So March 31st, uh, comments close and we'd love to hear from you. That's all I got. Russ, that was a great program. Thank you very much. You bet. Um, we should also mention that UWS has made office space available to Russ so that uh, he's right here in Sheboygan County most of his time, and he just moved into the city about a month ago. So welcome to Sheboygan. Well, thanks very much. And so did uh, University of Wisconsin Manitowoc. I have to say that, or you know, they, they get mad at me when I speak to council <laughs> up there. So yeah. Thank you very much. Next, we'll move on to public forum. Uh, yes, we have Debbie <coughs> Milan. Debbie, if you'd come up, please. Uh, Debbie, can you give me your home address? Okay, um, 1704 North 35th Street, Sheboygan. That's it. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay, yes, um, my speech is about the original contract that the city of Sheboygan, the SASD, and DNR signed for the program called the AIDS for the Acquisition and Development of Local Parks signed by the mayor, the superintendent, and the DNR in 1994. It was a perpetuity agreement to establish the Field of Dreams as a city park. Now there is no longer any financial need to sell our children's Field of Dreams because of the $29 million granted to this SASD by referendum. 
Being a park <coughs> established by the city, the Field of Dreams is protected under City Ordinance uh, Section 74-2, Establishments of Parks in which it will maintain, uh, quote, maintain, establish, maintain, and preserve its parks in perpetuity for the benefit and enjoyment of all generations of the city's residents, unquote. Um, in this city of Sheboygan map, right here, it lists all the green areas as either parks or golf courses. Since the Field of Dreams is not a golf course, it's therefore a park. According to the City of Sheboygan Strategic Plan of 2017 to 2021, the vision statement reads, quote, the City of Sheboygan will be a family-oriented and prosperous community with a wide variety of recreation opportunities in safe and attractive neighborhoods, unquote. The neighborhood of the current Field of Dreams is attractive and beneficial to the community. <coughs> Why would we remove, remove it? Under respect, uh, quote, treating people with dignity and an attitude of caring and understanding, showing genuine consideration for others, valuing each individual as an individual, unquote. When the neighbors went to the trouble of signing the rezoning protest petition, then the city needs to respect its citizens' wishes, not override them. Under accountability, quote, we maintain an organizational reputation for openness, accountability, and integrity, unquote. The city needs to remain accountable to every neighborhood, neighborhood not abandoning any one. Um, under service, our primary duty is to, uh, quote, our primary duty is to serve the people. We are accessible, consistent, responsive, and understanding, unquote. We want thoughtful responses and understanding, but we feel ignored and forgotten. The way you treat the least of your citizens is, how, is a reflection of how you will treat all of your citizens. Under the goal, prov quote, provide Sheboygan citizens with a safe and secure community which invests in outstanding recreation, libraries, community open spaces, maximizing the natural environment, ensure solutions that are sustainable and environmentally responsible, unquote. The Field of Dreams is an outstanding recreational open space and a natural environment. Keeping it is far more sustainable and environmentally responsible than transferring it to a less than adequate space. The goal, quote, refurbish, maintain, develop, and or expand public use places and spaces, and maintain adequate recreational lands to meet current and future recreation needs, unquote. Notice, it doesn't say replace recreational lands, but to maintain them. Under, uh, quote, position Sheboygan as a desirable place in which to live, unquote. How can the Field of Dreams neighborhood be a desirable place with two medical complexes adjacent to each other? Aurora has the opportunity to not make the same mistake twice of building a hospital in a residential zone. Aurora has prime land, 100 acres on the south side of Sheboygan, right off the interstate compared to the 35 acres of the Field of Dreams. An excellent goal, quote, conduct more public input sessions regarding key issues to receive support from citizen residents and be able to present both sides of issues, unquote. We have presented the negative impact that removing the Field of Dreams would have on the community and neighbors, not to mention the loss of the Northside Community Gardens. Most of the neighbors are now cynical that their city representatives do not represent them or care about their input or wishes. Under 2017 action items, quote, continue citizen survey on an annual basis, create a citizen engagement plan, unquote. You need to be responsible to citizen concerns. The citizens were very engaged and gave ample input about the potential demise of the Field of Dreams in 2015. Aurora can build on the south side of their own property, and, uh, on their own property, and annex it to the city or stay in the town of Wilson. There is no tax base with a hospital. Wherever they build will bring jobs and serve health needs. Please, let's save the Field of Dreams. Next, we'll go on to mayor's announcements. I'd like to ask Shar Pakniak to join me up at the podium. Tonight, I'd like to present a proclamation. Whereas February 6th through 10th of 2017 is National School Counseling Week. And whereas Horizon for Girls Mentoring has a goal of igniting the spark in teenage girls with the ultimate goal of high school graduation and a plan for their future. They are able to currently boast a 100% graduation rate for the girls engaged in their programming. And whereas Sheboygan Area School District counselors work in collaboration with Horizon for Girls, helping the students through life's challenges. And whereas a mentor is a caring, consistent presence who devotes time to a young person 
to help that young person discover personal strength and achieve their potential through a structured, trusted relationship. And whereas quality mentoring encourages positive choices, promotes self-esteem, supports academic achievement, and introduces young people to new ideas, and whereas mentoring programs have shown to be effective in combating school violence and discipline problems, substance abuse, incarceration, and truancy, now, therefore, I, Mike Vandersteen, Mayor of the City of Sheboygan, do hereby declare February 6th through 10th of 2017 as National School Counseling Week in Sheboygan and call upon up public officials, business and community leaders and educators and encourage all citizens of City of Sheboygan to observe this week with the appropriate ceremonies, activities, and programs in order to recognize the men and women who serve as staff and volunteers at quality mentoring programs and who help our young people find inner strength to reach their full potential. Shar, I'd like to present this to you and I wish you all the best with your mentoring program. I'd also like to call the public's attention to our new City of Sheboygan e-newsletter that was released for the first time on Thursday. Uh, the e-newsletter is available uh, that, uh, that for a download on our city website. There's a banner ad that you can click on. You'll be taken to that. And we'll continue to uh, issue this every month. So if anybody has any ideas to improve the newsletter and add things to it, please let the mayor's office know. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. Next, we'll go on to the consent agenda. Uh, they include items 2.2 through 2.11. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I would move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Is there a second? Second. All those items then are before us. Is there any discussion on anything on the consent agenda? Seeing no discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Twelve eyes. Oh my goodness. Twelve eyes. <laughs> Motion passes. Under reports of officers, items 3.1 through 3.9 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, items 4.1 through 4.7 will again be referred to various committees. Under reports of officers, item 5.1 is an RC number 299 of 1617 by Finance Committee, to whom was referred resolution number 152 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing entering into a promissory note with Gorman and Company for the former Washington school site development, and recommends that the resolution be placed on file. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt to file the document. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? See none. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Item 5.2 is an RC 303 of 1617 by salary and grievances to whom was referred resolution number 175 of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue amending resolution number 67 of 1617 so as to make certain changes in the city's medical benefit plan for the calendar year of 2017 coverage. It recommends that the attached substitute resolution be passed. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept and adopt and put the substitute resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Thank you. 
Susie? Oh. And Scott? Hi. Eleven ayes, one no. Motion passes. Item 5.3 is an RC number 304 of 1617 by the Finance Committee, to whom is referred resolution number 167 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing entering into an agreement with Rupert Milkey for planning and preliminary engineering services related to the expansion of the Sheboygan Business Center and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I moved uh, to accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please uh, one. Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Um, <coughs> I kind of waited here to see if there was going to be any discussion on this, and uh, I'm kind of surprised that there's not, seeing as how the last time we had a study come before us that there was a hue and cry of <coughs> Uh, why do we need a study? We've got all the uh, department heads and at ma uh, subject matter experts in-house. We don't need to be spending money on studies. This study is $34,000. We've also got another study that's going to be referred, uh, number 7.5, uh, to transit for $42,000. So we've got $70,000, some thousand dollars worth of studies that we're looking at this evening. Um, and I'm just wondering from my, my counterparts why there is no outcry for this when there certainly was before. I mean, it was mentioned before, you know, we even had somebody that went to Harvard. I mean, so we've got, we've got the subject matter experts. I look, read the document. We've got, you know, we've got uh, a market analysis, engineering. We've certainly got an engineering department. We've got planning. We've got a planning department. So I'm just wondering why we're doing this when it certainly was the will of the council and it was, you know, expressed loud and clear last time that you know we were not in favor of doing this thank you for those comments is there any other discussion seeing none will the clerk please call the roll No. No. Six eyes, six no's. Uh, mayor votes aye. Motion passes. Item 5.5 .5 is an RC number 307 of 1617. Pardon me? <coughs> Okay, uh, 5.4 is an RC number 306 of 1617 by finance. Tumors referred resolution number 178 of 1617 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2017 budget, establishing an estimated revenue and appropriation for the contracted services for planning and preliminary engineering services related to the expansion of the Sheboygan Business Center and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderperson Donahue. I move to accept, adopt, and put the resolution upon its passage. Is there a second? Second. We have a second. The motion's on the floor. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Donahue. Well, all I can say is that this um, uh, business park is pretty important to us. And we may think that we're saving $34,000 here, a little bit there, or a little bit there. And yet, if we don't bring in expertise to tell us the very best way to use extremely valuable land that is going to produce significant tax base for us, and we just wing it, I guess I'm perplexed. I just don't understand what the deal is. <laughs> so what I would assume then is that folks here would have no problem if they had some sort of serious illness and just sticking with their GP, maybe just the nurse practitioner. You know, they know their stuff, they do good work. Why in the world would I wanna see a specialist to determine what I need? I'm just gonna go ahead and just take the least common denominator. We 
could hire and keep on staff highly trained, focused, specialized experts that could obviate the need for these kinds of studies. We could do that at huge expense and huge inefficiencies. This is a smart way of doing it, and I just suggest we get on with it and that we do it so that we, when we finally figure out what we need to do, we have expert opinions telling us. I, oh well. Thank you for sharing those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Scott? No. Six ayes, six noes. Mayor votes aye. Motion passes. Items, item 5.5 is RC number 307 of 1617 by salary and grievances to whom was referred resolution number 179 of 1617 by Alderperson Donahue approving a human resources department cell phone usage and bring your own device policy and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, could I just get a summary of this? I read the document. I'm just not here, you know, sure of, of what the previous policy was or you know, what, what the changes are in this. Just get a, a summary of this. We didn't have any previous policy, so this is a new policy so that we can allow people to be compensated uh, for their own cost if they decide to use their own phone for city business. And if there's a budget for them to have their own uh, phone, it also, uh, I mean, for a city phone, then it also establishes policies for that, that person's use of that phone. So are we eliminating the two phones then, or? Is it either you pick and choose what you want to do or? You can choose what you want to do. Is there any other discussion? Alderperson Jose. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so what kind of freedom do they have? I mean, can they pick a $200 a month plan and the city will pay for it? Or does the city get an input or is there going to be a maximum per month that the city is going to pay? Yes, there is a maximum per month. Do you remember what that is? Yeah. There are three levels uh, for high usage, uh, $40 a month, moderate use, uh, $20 a month, and minimal usage, $5 a month. Okay. Is it uh, Alderperson Heidemann? Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. I, I, yeah, I wasn't at the meeting, but I guess uh, I'm just kind of wondering, how do you determine, by them using their own personal phone, how often do they use their phone for city business versus personal business, and is the city reimbursed when they're on their phone for personal business? Uh, I, I guess this kind of opens the door to being able to have your phone on at all times, whenever. Are there any restrictions as to having, having their own personal phone and driving a vehicle? Um, again, that's, that's a dangerous thing. Do they text? You know, uh, I don't know what all goes into, the, into this ordinance. Uh, Many of those items uh, that you brought up are included in the policy, such as uh, usage uh, uh, associated with, uh, you know, hands-free uh, if, if an employee is driving. Uh, again, this policy, the, the amendment associated with this policy, uh, which was uh, drafted by the assistant uh, city attorney, again, as Mayor Vanderstein identified, really focuses on bring your own device. And so if an employee brings their own cell phone, uh, you know, we don't restrict how they use it, you know, for personal use. Uh, we're only trying to reimburse them uh, for uh, city-related activities. It's going to be up to uh, myself uh, and the department head and HR director to determine which of those three categories, $40, $20, or $5, that they're going to be eligible for. In some cases, the minimal use, the $5 per month, is going to be seasonal, so it may not be 12 months out of the year. Is there any other discussion? 
Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage. Scott? Aye. Nine eyes, three no's. Motion passes. Under ordinances, item 6.1 through 6.4 will be referred to various committees. And then we'll move on to other matters received after the agenda was published. City Attorney. Seven point one is a resolution by Alderperson Bellinger authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into a revised state municipal agreement. This relates to the design and construction of the State Highway 42 Calumet Drive reconstruction from Main Avenue to North 26th Street scheduled for 2017 construction. Um, that will be referred to the Public Works Committee. 7.2 is an RO uh, by the city clerk submitting a communication from Christopher Gable requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 2501 North 6th Street. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 7.3 is a resolution by Alderperson Thiel authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for the purchase of two full-size pickup trucks and one compact pickup truck. That will be referred to public protection and safety. 7.4 is a resolution authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a uh, contract for the purchase of a Harper Due Ease slope mower for the mowing of steep inclines for the Public Works Department. It's a resolution by Alderperson Bellinger. That will be referred to the Public Works Committee. 7.5 is a resolution by Alderperson Wolf authorizing a purchasing agent to enter into a contract for the provision and performance of a parking study for downtown Sheboygan. That will be referred to the Transit Committee. 7.6 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting a communication from Charlie Klima requesting the opportunity to speak to the committee responsible for the policy concerning the cost of sidewalk repair after tree root problems. That would be referred to the Public Works Committee. 7.7 .7 is an RO by the Director of Public Works submitting a traffic signal warrant study for State Highway 28 Washington Avenue at 32nd Street intersection. That will be referred to Public Works. 7.8 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Adrian Reinwand requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 815 St. Clair Avenue. That will be referred to Public Protection and Safety Committee. 7.9 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Brittany A. Bremer for alleged damages to her parked vehicle when a snowplow allegedly hit a manhole cover uh, and it hit her car. That will be referred to the Finance Committee. 7.10 is a resolution by uh, Alderperson Wolf uh, being a declaration of official intent by the City of Sheboygan to reimburse an expenditure with the proceeds uh, of a borrowing or borrowing authorized by the issuer. That will lie over. 7.11 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting <coughs> various license applications for the period ending December 31, 2017, June 30, 2017, and June 30, 2018. Referred to law and licensing. 7.12 is an RO by the city clerk submitting as a matter of record the Sheboygan County Humane Society's annual finance report for 2015 with the 2016 to report to follow in May. That will lie over. Uh, city Attorney, you also had a, a note that you wanted to make on the vote on the uh, financial appropriation. I have my note back so I have the uh, just um, budget transfers pursuant to uh, 2-906. Uh, when their budget transfers from an unencumbered uh, balance to another purpose, they require a two-thirds vote. Uh, based on that item, 5.4 actually <coughs> failed. Um, the mayor was not able to break the tie on that. Thank you. Next uh, is a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to convene in closed session. Under the provisions of Section 1985, Sub 1, Sub E, where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to a development opportunity with the Founders Club, 930 North 6th Street, and a development opportunity on the city-owned 57-acre parcel on County Highway OK. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Would the clerk please call the roll for closed session?
Scott. Hi. Eleven eyes, one no. Motion passes. We'll take a short recess until uh, quarter to the hour. And I just want to advise the public at home that we'll be adjourning in closed session. So this will end our uh, session for tonight. Thank you very much.